anyone who believes in God will immediately agree if he's unbiased with what I've said in the last one hour. He'll have to agree that the Quran is from God. But what about a person who does not believe in God himself? If a person does not believe in God, where is the question of Quran being a word of God? So now, we have dealt with the majority of the people, but yet there is a large percentage who are atheists, who do not believe in God himself. How do we deal with them? When I meet an atheist, and if he says that he does not believe in God, the first thing I do is, I congratulate that atheist. Now you may wonder, that why is Zakir congratulating an atheist? The reason I'm congratulating him is because most of the human beings, they are doing blind belief. Most of the Christians, the Christians, because the father is a Christian. He's a Hindu, because father is Hindu. Some of them are Muslims, because the father is a Muslim. They aren't thinking. This person, he's thinking. He may be coming from a religious background, but he may not agree that the God which his parents are worshipping is what to be called as God. The reason I congratulate atheist is because he has said the first part of the Islamic Shahada, Islamic creed, La ilaha, there is no God. The only thing I have to do is prove to him illa Allah, but Allah, which I shall do inshallah. To the other non-Muslims, to the other non-Muslims first, I have to prove to him that the God he's worshipping is false. So half the time I waste in trying to prove that the God he's worshipping is false. Here, half my job is done, la ilaha. Only thing left for me is illa Allah and then Muhammad Rasulullah. But Allah and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon the Messenger of Allah. Now this atheist, he rejects God because he has the wrong concept of God. Now anyone who says he does not believe in God, first I'll ask him, what is the definition of God? For anyone to reject anything, he should know its definition. For example, if I say this is a pen, for you to say it is not a pen, you should know the definition of pen. If you don't know the definition of pen, you cannot say this is not a pen. Is it clear? Do you agree with me or not? If I say this is a pen, for you to say it is not a pen, you have to know the definition of pen, otherwise, you cannot logically say it's not a pen. There was a smart person. He said, no, Brother Zakir. I know that's a book. So even if I don't know the definition of a pen, I can say it's not a pen. I know it's a book. So why should I know the definition of pen? So I said, fine. Do you know that's a book? He says, yes. I say, this, this is a kitab. He will say, no, it's not a kitab. He knows the definition of book, but does not know the definition of kitab. Kitab, in Arabic, and Urdu, means a book. If I say this is a pen, knowing definition of a pen is more important than knowing what is this. Same way, if a person says there's no God, I'll first ask him, what is the definition of God? The definition they give is when they see that a God tells a lie, a God can be defeated, the God, he can be killed. So when we hear all these stories of God telling a lie, a God can be defeated, a God can be killed, a God can die, a God requires to eat. So they reject the God. Who are they rejecting? They are rejecting the false gods, la ilaha. Similarly, someone, if he believes that Islam is a religion of terrorism, Islam is a merciless religion, Islam is an unscientific religion. Islam is a religion which does not give rights to the woman. 
and he rejects this Islam. I say, even I reject such Islam. Because I know that Islam is a merciful religion. Islam, it's a scientific religion. Islam has human rights. Islam has women rights. So what do I do? I tell him, the Islam you believe and you reject, it should be rejected, but true Islam is, then I present to him the true Islam. Similarly, when these people are rejecting the false God, we have to present to them what is the true God. And the best definition of Almighty God, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, given in the Quran, is from Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4, which says, Kul huwa Allahu ahad. Say, He is Allah one and only. Allah samad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Lam yirid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Walam yakul lahu kuffan ahad. There is nothing like him. This is a four-line definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any person saying that so-and-so person is God, if that person fits in this four-line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that person as God. The first is, Kul wallahuad, says Allah one and only. Second is, Allah samad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Lam milid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Walam yakul lahu kuffanad. There is nothing like him. There are many people who say that Dajnish, he's Almighty God. Let us put this Bhagwan Dajnish to the test of Surah class. There's a person who asked me a question at the time, that Brother Zakir, we Hindus do not believe in Bhagwan Dajnish to be God. I never said that Hindus believe Bhagwan Dajnish to be God. I've read the Hindu scripture. Nowhere do the Hindu scriptures say Bhagavan Rajesh is God. I said some human beings, some people believe Bhagavan Rajesh to be God. Let us put this Bhagavan Rajesh to the test of Surah class. The first is, Qul huwa Allah ahad. Says Allah one and only. Was Bhagavan Rajesh one and only? Was he the only man who claimed divinity? There are hundreds who have claimed divinity. And in this country alone, there are thousands who have claimed that they were gods. He's not the only one. But the Rajesh Bhakt will say no. He is one and only, he is unique. Let's go to the next test. Allah Samad. Allah, the absolute eternal. Was Rajnish absolute eternal? We know from the autobiography of Rajnish, he says that he was suffering from asthma, from chronic backache, from diabetes mellitus. Imagine Almighty God suffering from asthma, chronic backache, diabetes mellitus. Third test is, Lam yulid walam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. We know Bhagavan Rajnish. He was born in Madhya Pradesh. And later on, in 1981, he goes to America and takes thousands of Americans for a ride. And in the state of Oregon, he starts his village called as Rajnishpuram. Later on, the American government, they arrest him and they put him behind bars. And Rajnish, he alleges that the American government they slow poisoned me in the prison. Imagine Almighty God being slow poisoned. Later on, the American government, the king of the country, he comes back to India and goes back to the city of Pune, where he has a center, which is now called as Osho Commune. And when you go to the center, if you go to the Samadhi, it is mentioned there on the Samadhi, Bhagavan Rajnish, Osho, never born, never died, but visited the earth from the 11th of December 1931 to the 19th of January 1990. Never born, never died, but visited the earth from the 11th of December 1931 to the 19th of January 1990. They forgot to mention on a Samadhi that he was not given visas to more than 21 countries of the world. Almighty God coming to visit the world and he requires visas. And the Archbishop of Greece said that if you don't remove Rajnish out of this country, we'll burn his house and the house of his disciple. And the last test, there's nothing like him, is so stringent that no one besides the true Almighty God can pass. The moment you can compare God to anyone in this world, to anyone in the universe, he's not God. There's nothing like him. Suppose someone says that Almighty God is a thousand times stronger than Arnold Schwarzenegger. You may have heard the name of Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
the person who got the title Mr. World, the strongest man in the world, Mr. Universe, the strongest man in the universe. If someone says that Almighty God is thousand times stronger than Arnold Schwarzenegger, the moment you can compare God to anything in this world, whether it be Arnold Schwarzenegger, whether it be Dara Singh, whether it be King Kong, whether it be a thousand times or million times, the moment you can compare God to anything in this world, He is not God. There's nothing like Him. You know Bhagavan Rajnish, he wore white clothes, he had a beard, he had two eyes like the human beings, one nose, two hands. The moment you can compare God to anything in this world, he is not God. Otherwise, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 110. Say, call upon him by Allah or by Rahman. By whichever name you call upon him, to him belong the most beautiful names. You can call Allah by any name, but it should be a beautiful name. It should not conjure up a mental picture. It should be a name given by himself. And this message, besides being mentioned in Surah Isra, chapter 17, verse 110, it's also mentioned in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse 180, in Surah Ta, chapter number 20, verse number 8, as well as Surah Hashir, chapter 59, verse number 24, that to Allah belong the most beautiful names.